Hello, everybody. Um, welcome to our panel questioning traditions. I would like to welcome uh, our audience from all over the world. Um, Catherine, Nisa, and me, we are both conveners of this performing arts section. And maybe, Catherine, you would like to introduce you right now. Please go sure. ahead. Um, I'm Catherine Mieser. I teach at the University of California, Berkeley, and I'm so pleased to have this panel. I mean, Anna and I were kind of searching for the, the traditions. Where are they? <laughs> and of yeah. course, I started in, you know, in, with the Onagata and the Wakashu, the Bishonen. So I am always so fascinated by how we move across What's, a very old, what's ancient and, and traditional, but at the same time, because we are the researchers of now, you mm -hmm. know, how we, how we question is so different. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Yes, and uh, it's just the same with me. Um, now we are finally in the topic of traditional theater, one of my favorite, which I'm also uh, teaching mainly Kabuki at Tokyo University. And I'm also doing a research on production history of theater production in Japan. But now, First of all, this uh, session is recorded um, that everybody knows whoever switches on his um, video he will be recorded. We will do all three papers in a row, one after another. And afterwards, we encourage you to raise your hand and speak up and ask your questions or write them in the chat, preferably in the Zoom chat. This okay. is much easier to follow up. So I know it's my great pleasure to introduce you uh, our first presenter in this section, uh, Jakub Karpoluk, assistant professor at the Japanese culture department and media arts department of the Polish Academy at Polish Japanese Academy IT. His main area of research in Japanese studies is no theater and performing arts in general and also visual arts. He has co-directed, produced, and performed in no performances in Poland, Japan, Germany, Austria, and France. And in his paper at Jacob's Well on Transcultural No Theater, he will share his experience and pursue the question of transculturality in Shinsaku No. Jacob, the yes. stage is yours. Thank you very much. Now I'll, I'll share my uh, screen. Yep, that, that's it. Okay, can you see this? Yes, perfect. So I'll, I'll, I'll show begin. Uh, early 21st century finds itself marked by very intense, uh, we could say, uh, very intense intercultural dialogue in the field of theater, at least pre-pandemic. Uh, theatrical uh, interconnections seem to be related to performances of various ensembles produced outside the borders of their home countries, the use of transcultural elements in stage productions, and cooperation between artists from different parts of the world. These phenomena are also characteristic of contemporary Japanese no theater. Uh, during the last few decades, quite a few uh, international and transcultural shinsaku no newly written no dramas have been produced. The number of these performances and willingness of no artists, including the field's star performers, proves that there exists an entire artistic current, uh, which could be called transcultu transcultural shinsaku uh, within modern no repertory. Uh, examples include uh, Pagoda, uh, a drama written by Janet Chang in both English and Japanese and produced for the stage by the Theater Nogaku and Richard Emmert in 2009. Two Polish plays by Jadwiga Rodowicz Czechowska, Chiori Tsushi, The Piano Tuner 2011, and Chinkon, Repose of Souls 2016, brought to stage in both Poland and Japan by the Tesenkai Theater. The Japanese Greek drama Meifuko Nekia, based on the 11th book of the Odyssey, staged in Tokyo and Epidaurus in 2015. Tada Tomio's Holy Mother of Nagasaki, staged in Japan, US, and Europe by the Kansas school actor Shimizu Kanji. And um, Jakobu Noido at Jacob's Well, written by Austrian. Uh, author Dietrich Leopold and brought to the stage in Austria, France, 
and, and Poland in 2019. Uh, this is Vienna, uh, uh, Paris, and, and then Warsaw. Uh, again, by the Tesenka, a renowned troupe of the of the Kanze school, Stekata actors, since many years led by Kanze Tetsunojo the ninth. Uh, just few weeks ago. Uh, Jakub Unoido was and, and Holy Mother of Nagasaki, Nagasaki no Seibo, was, was staged in the Zako in Tokyo. Uh, these are the web pages of the performance. The performance itself is not uh, available yet, but hopefully it will be released on YouTube. Uh, as you can see, we were dealing with different type of stages. This is the Zako uh, stage. Uh, uh, the, the, the performance was branded as Tessen Contemporary uh, and as you can see in the film um, uh, on the, it, it was released on, on the uh, newly designed uh, stage just referring to the to the conventional no stage Fortunately, it was staged uh, uh, despite the pandemic. Unfortunately, two foreign actors uh, um, that, that were, were uh, contracted, including me and Austrian actress Nina Fogg, my friend, could not appear in the production due to, uh, due to lockdown. Uh, I have found a similarly fascinating a short piece uh, titled Dali No written by Shimizu Kanji, who also starred in this play, for the uh, Salvador Dali art exhibition held at the National Art Center in Tokyo in 2016. The, produ the production drew heavily on, on new media elements, and in the projections, uh, designer Saito Seichi used uh, images of some of Dali paintings, including Atomic and Uranic uh, Melancholic Idol, uh, and on, on, on 13th of September 2016, Dali no was performed during a ceremony at the National Art Center in Tokyo, the day before the Dali exhibition opened. Uh, so brought back among the living in present-day Tokyo, the painter's ghost wandered through the museum halls and even used the elevator. Uh, he sang um, the prizes of scientific progress uh, reminded his wife Gala, prayed for the exhibition's success and then finally disappeared. Uh, using this link, um, uh, which I can paste later in the chat, you can watch the project's documentation. In November 2020, Tesenkai, again Tesenkai actor Nishimura Takao, here on the photo, staged a play titled Farewell My Concubine, a fusion of No and Beijing opera. Uh, the, the, the entire play can be watched on YouTube and, uh, using this link. Uh, and the list of similar performances is longer. Uh, other examples of pushing No's conventional boundaries include um, performances that combine aspects of No with realistic theater, buto, or those in which no actors perform conventional dances, my, to classical or experimental music. Besides the recent uh, transcultural tendencies, to some extent, no has been a transcultural and interconnected performance practice for centuries. As Leo Xing Yip in his book has noticed, a significant number of no dramas written mainly between the late 14th and mid 16th centuries are in some way related to China, Chinese culture or, or Chinese characters. Complex, of course, complex relationships between Ch Japan, China and Korea go, go back very, uh, a very long way. And since at least the, the 16th century, the relationship have existed between Japan and European countries. These interconnections have manifested themselves in various ways, uh, ranging from the materiality of the objects and texts through the music and performing arts up to religion and, and philosophy. Cultural inter, uh, interrelations expand the boundaries of uh, conventional theaters worldwide, while recent rapid pre-pandemic globalization considerably accelerated a great deal of uh, international artistic initiatives and theater 
productions. Erika fischer lichte stresses that the theater in general did not develop in isolation in most cultures, but rather through uh, cultural exchange. Um, uh, the same also holds true for classical Japanese theaters, I believe. Nor, although still a conventional performance, has changed considerably throughout its history, and contemporary no artists are willing to get involved in various types of stage productions. I believe that this res receptiveness to change demonstrated in past centuries ultimately paved the way for contemporary transcultural engagements of no actors and musicians. It also ought to be mentioned here that the creation of no as we know it uh, was a long process. Uh, with a long line of artists contributing to it. Although the world of no theater is rather conservative in terms of stage aesthetics and acting, there is a specific need for a change among the performers, uh, as far as I could observe. Many contemporary uh, no artists, including the so-called Kanze Sankyodai, Kanze His uh, they passed away, all of them, Kanze Hisao, Kanze Tetsunojo the Eighth, Shizuo, and uh, Kanze Hideo here on the photo, uh, along with their hair, uh, Shizuo's son Kanze Tetsunojo the Ninth, have significantly reshaped the no, also through their involvement in transcultural and cross-genre stage productions. Uh, Japanese aesthetician Yoshioka Hiroshi stated that Japanese aesthetics and arts, like aesthetics in any other culture did not emerge solely from an isolated traditional entity, but were formed by uh, complex and multiple interactions between different cultures. Beyond the doubt, the decisive moment in the, in the history of these interactions came with the impact of modern Western aesthetics and art, but this was not a simple process of assimilation or indigenization. Instead, we are uh, dealing with a collision of conventions and this mutual mutual process of colliding forms can be traced in the modern theater evidence uh, of this process can be found in, in Meifu Nekea, chamber opera uh, komachi revisited dalino uh, and at, at jacob's well yakubu no Ido, uh, and other other dramas which forms uh, verse close to the convention of, of Fanta's Mugen no place. Uh, the last transcultural Shinsaku no project I would like to analyze is, is at Jacob's Well, Jakobu no Ido, brought to the stage in September 2019, originally, uh, by the Tesenkai in Europe, as I have mentioned, uh, and three weeks ago premiered in Tokyo. The play was written by, by the Austrian psychotherapist, art historian, uh, and Japanologist Dieter Leopold, uh, Leopold in this in uh, lower photo in the middle. The no text was uh, then adapted by scholar Oda Sachiko and Kanze School the actor Shimizu Kanji, who is on the on the left side, uh, who also played uh, the lead part and directed the, the whole project throughout the years. It also ought to be mentioned here that Shimizu Kanji was one of the last. Uh, professional disciples of the late Kanze Hisao, which is the Hisao's legacy is quite important, I believe. Uh, I had the privilege of playing uh, the Waki in, uh, Tsure part in this play. Uh, after some 14 years of acting apprenticeship, um, I was offered the role, I believe, not because I mastered no acting so well. Probably there was nobody from Shimogakari Hosho school, my school of Waki uh, actors who was available or, or who was willing to, to take this role. And I was just uh, waiting around the corner. Uh, let's see a very short uh, film concerning the premiere in Vienna, including interviews with both Shimizu Kanji and Dithard Leopold. Ich glaube, es war schwer, den Nahostkonflikt ins Nottheater zu übertragen. 
Aber man kann es mit seiner kunstvollen Struktur dafür einsetzen, um darzustellen, wie der Einzelne mit dem umgeht, was sein Schicksal ist, das er nicht kennt. Damit kann man gewissermaßen Mauern einreißen, beziehungsweise unsere Augen öffnen. Und genau das ist, was No zum Ausdruck bringen kann. Hoffen wir jedenfalls. Die Erleuchtung ist quasi in, Buddhisti in den buddhistischen Wegen die extreme Erfahrung der Ich-Auflösung in Selbst. Das Nottheater spielt das sozusagen auf einer menschlichen, vielleicht allzu menschlichen Ebene nach, aber mit einem ähnlichen geistigen Hintergrund. Und dafür habe ich dieses Symbol des Wasseranbietens und Wasserannehmens genommen. Ich weiß nicht, ob man sowas einfach politisch nennen kann. Das Stück dreht sich ja einfach um Menschen, die miteinander Wasser teilen. Das ist ja für Menschen lebenswichtig. Und wenn man versteht, wie wichtig das ist, erkennt man auch, wie man in einer Gesellschaft zusammenleben könnte, wenn man nicht mehr das betont, was uns voneinander trennt. The plot goes as follows. An old Israeli teacher, uh, played by, by Waki, uh, guides a, a young Russian Jewish immigrant through Palestina, uh, and they finally reach uh, Jacob's Well near the city of, of Nablus. There, they meet an old Palestinian woman who tells them the story of the encounter between Jesus and, and the young Samaritan woman uh, by the very well. In the first part of the play, the woman by the well is a real living person who has lost both her... Oh, maybe I should do this. Uh, who has uh, lost both her daughter and son in a terrorist attack and uh, military conflict. In the second part, the heroine reveals her true nature. She's the ghost of the young Samaritan woman from the past. Uh, she waits for a Jew to offer her, and, and a man, uh, offer her water again, a sip of which could let her never thirst again. The two men, the sensei and the young immigrant, resolve to oblige her and take a step toward the woman Uh, the younger man is skeptical, unwilling to cross cultural taboos, but the teacher is wiser and is finally able to convince the young immigrant uh, to follow through. Uh, the old professor sensei was played by the renowned wacky actor Tonoda Kenkichi of the Shimogakari Hosho School, my shisho, my, uh, the, the master teacher who offered me the, the, the wakitsure role some year prior to the production. Uh, like a standard no play at Jacob's Well revolves around the central event of, of the past. The encounter between the Samaritan woman and Christ at Jacob's Well as related uh, by uh, the New Testament, during which he, uh, a Jew and a man, offered her, a, a, a woman native of Samaria, water. Simultaneously, it draws on a key poetic theme theme connected closely with this event, the importance of water and the significance of basic human gestures to offer and give water and to accept the offering and the substance. And here a personal aside. I have been studying wacky acting and uh, writing uh, uh, about it for almost seven years be before 
I was put on the stage. During that period, I stayed in Tonoda's, uh, Tonoda Kenkichi's house in Kanazawa. I trained with him in Tokyo. I met his mother and wife. I was present at the theater when his son made his debut as Waki. No is a family business. Uh, I was maybe not very successfully, but trying to learn many aspects of stagecraft, including maintaining costumes. Uh, and in the fall of 2019, I was granted my uh, my uh, a, a my Ogi, a stage fan, actually this one. Uh, and an order to do my to do my job playing the the tsure part, which is a minor role, of course, in Jakobu no Ido. If you think about the role of the Waki, Waki plays an important role uh, in the beginning of the drama, for it is he who first appear on, on, uh, appears on stage during the Nanori, the calling of the names section of the drama, and this is he who defines the whole situation. Uh, Waki provides the establishing monologue during which he usually uh, presents himself and the setting in which the action takes place. Later on, it is the character played by Waki who usually summons the presence of the supernatural, a ghost played by the masked actor. And in At Jacob's Well, the first word belonged to me and Tonoda Kenkichi. Let's see a very, really one minute uh, short material from the 2019 Warsaw performance. <laughs> As mentioned above, a Jacob's Well was originally brought to the stage in Vienna, Paris, and Warsaw, and each of the three capitals' local acting talents uh, was involved, I'm not saying about myself, in the production, in the I part, uh, that of the supernatural cat commenting on human misdeeds. In the interlude between first and second parts, speaking in German, French, and Polish, respectively, the local actors helped connect the local audiences to the performance, in Tokyo, uh, the cat was played by Myung Hwa Hong, actress of the Korean descent. The unusual, very unusual, original Neko Omote cat mask was created especially for the project. Uh, and the, the cat was uh, was important character of the play. Here I believe he's trying to eat a mouse. Uh, its monologue took more than 20 minutes uh, and it has, let's say, eco-critically commented on the misdeeds of human and their lack of common sense. Uh, the final moment of the play involves a, involves a gift of water. Uh, the, the, the political aspect of the drama is naturally an interrogation of the present day relationship between the Palestinians and the Israelis, their conflicts over the land where they live or want to live, their ongoing struggles over water, a resource growing ever scarcer in the Middle East. Uh, the play also seeks to ask the question who should or could make the first well-intentioned move toward the other so that the both populations may peacefully coexist alongside each other. 
one day. I also believe it has a broader general meaning, since similar conflicts can be found all over the world, unfortunately. Concluding, uh, the type of no performances that I have briefly examined uh, are in general experiments. Their performers are stepping into the unknown, trying to formulate certain contact zones, to, to borrow from Stephen Greenblatt, uh, where cultural values are exchanged. Uh, but is the transculturalism a, a relatively new a, a addition to conventions of the no theater? Not, not exactly. Many of the approximately 240 canonical no dramas that are still being performed today contain allusions to Chinese literature um, and about tenth of them, including masterpieces like Shakyo, Kantan, Shoujo, here on the photo, um, uh, written by unknown authors, along with Choryo uh, by Kanze Nobumitsu, Yokihi by Komparu Zenchiku, and other plays, feature stories or characters that of the uh, Chinese uh, uh, that that are Chinese in origin. Uh, the group of the uh, plays uh, concerning Chinese locations and heroes today often referred uh, to as uh, karagoto, meaning Chinese subjects and, and things, has been in existence since the early days of No, written mainly between the late 14th and the mid-16th centuries. These Chinese plays reflect the assimilation of Chinese culture in Japan during the, uh, during the Muromachi period, or prior to it, uh, and how audiences and patrons of No view China and Chinese culture. No has been invented during the Muromachi era, partly, of course, partly basing on a wide range of the materials and images of China, which accumulated uh, in and permitted Japanese culture prior to the emergence of the performance itself. So, concluding, uh, taking under the account the old Chinese repertoire within No, and the present-day slowly growing popularity of transcultural uh, Shinsaku no plays, prompted and augmented by globalization, I would go so far as to risk positing that transculturalism as an artistic strategy seems to be included in the broad catalogue of no theatre's constituent values and principles. Thank you very much for, for your attention. Yeah, thank you very much, Jakob, for your most you. deep insights in transcultural Shinsaku no and your own experience. We really thank appreciated you. that. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I would like now to introduce our next speaker. This is Jihei Kim from uh, Osaka University, where she is a PhD candidate. Her research focuses on the history of Kabuki, mainly in the Edo Tokyo region in the late Edo and Meiji periods. And in her paper, The Process of Canonization in Meiji Kabuki by Ichikawa Danjiro, the ninth, she relates exactly to her research. Please, Jihye, go along. Okay, <laughs> thank you for your kind introduction. Um, can you hear my voice? Yes, all okay. fine. Thank you. And I will share my screen. Um, okay. Um, oh, excuse me. Okay, and hello everyone. I'm um, Jihye Kim, a PhD candidate at Osaka University. And first of all, I'd like to thank our convener, Professor Bergman and Professor Mijer for inviting me to this wonderful panel. And I'm very glad to meet and um, discuss with other presenter under the theme of questioning traditions. Um, actually, um, as I mentioned earlier, I'm PhD candidate. So I'm planning to submit my doctoral dissertation this year. And its topic is uh, to trace the history of Kabuki from the early age period to the 1900s, focusing on three aspects, nostalgia of Edo culture in the play, and modernization and canonization of Kabuki. Uh, so based on part of my 
presentation. Today, I'm going to address canonization phenomena of Kabuki in the Meiji period and how the Kabuki actor Ichikawa Danjiro the Knight was engaged in this. Um, before I begin the presentation, I'd like to let you know that I uh, already wrote a paper dealing with this topic because of the delay of the conference. So I hope that you would understand about this. And this paper was published on e-journal, so you can check on JSTAGE website if you are interested. Uh, then uh, let's move on to the presentation. Uh, as you know, Kabuki is one of Japanese classical theater, which originated in the early 17th century and was inscribed on the list of UNESCO Intangible Cultural Heritage, acknowledged for its symbolism of mass culture in the Edo period, as well as its long and cherished history. But of course, Kabuki was not initially a traditional theater. It was st still considered to be a contemporary performing art until the middle of the Meiji era. Indeed, after the Meiji Restoration of 1868, Kabuki was transformed by uh, adapting novel elements of the new era and became a target of reformation. Ichikawa Danjiro the Ninth was a renowned and significant actor who took an active part in the Kabuki work during this period. In particular, all of Danjiro's challenges were greatly influential to among audiences and in the Kabuki industry as he responded rapidly to changing society. For example, Danjiro promoted Katsure Kimono a new genre introducing historical investigation and a realistic acting style in order to revise existing historical plays. By doing this, Danjiro tried to do away with stylized performance of Kabuki, which were anachronistic and irrational in his view. Few intellectuals endorse Danjiro's new attempts, however, Peter Gore critics and even his colleague who accustomed to previous style felt uncomfortable with katsuri kimono and they often criticize it in public. Despite this, Danjiro's dedication toward katsuri kimono was at the peak uh, before the late 8080s, but eventually he became conservative and reacted skeptically to kabuki reforms by renouncing his unorthodox performance opposing the convention. Uh, in this presentation, I will use the term conversion. Um, I'm not sure this translation is good or not, but anyway, I use this term uh, to express his change like this. So my questions are when and why Danjiro began to shift his stance from reformation to conservatism. Many scholars state that the decisive factor was the emergence of Shinpa play, which captivated audiences by portraying spectacular battle scenes during the first Sino-Japanese War. Shinpa is an earlier form of Japan, Japanese modern theater, and this plays feature flamboyant performance style and modern realistic dialogue compared to kabuki plays. For this reason, Kamataki Shigetoshi argued that the conservative shift in Danjuro was prompted by the failure of a Kabuki play that attempted to co-opt the popularity of wartime Shinpa play. Kawatake Toshio also pointed out that the rise of Shinpa made Kabuki abandon its status as a contemporary art. That is to say, Shinpa plays aggravate Danjuro's sense that Kabuki was in crisis, and he then changed his position to conservatism. I agree with this argument to some degree. However, uh, it is problematic to confine the cause of Danjiro's conversion to Shinpa because this can oversimplify the issues surrounding the gradual canonization process of Kabuki. In my definition, canonization in Kabuki means attempts to situate Kabuki as a tradition by using the authority of the emperor or previous canons for elevating its stature uh, beyond public culture. From my perspective, prior to the rise of Shinpa, 
there were only indications of dangerous conversion and his attempts for canonization. My hypothesis is that Tenman Kabuki, an event in which Kabuki plays were staged for the Emperor Mage, could be a core motivation behind Danjuro's conversion. After this event, he might have realized that it was more effective for the survivor of Kabuki to reframe itself as a tradition instead of reforming. Now, let me briefly explain what Tanlan Kabuki is. Uh, this was an unprecedented event in which Kabuki plays were staged for the Emperor Mage, the Empress Shokan, Imperial families, and dignitary in April 1887. And, uh, and it, was, uh, it has the intention of uh, showing that Japan had an equivalent cultural level with other developed countries by government officials. Of the four days of performance from 26 to 29, the emperor attended performance on 26 April, and the performance of this day in particular are referred to as Tenman Kabuki. In this day, seven plays were performed by Kabuki actor under the leadership of Danjuro. Five plays, Kanjincho, Takatoki, Ayatsuri Sanbaso, Ryoshi no Tsukimi, and Genroko Odori, uh, were on the programs, and two more encore, Yamamba and Yojisoga, were staged at the request of the emperor on the spot. Tenman Kabuki was a remarkable event, considering that Kabuki actors were treated as hinin or outcasts in the Edo period, so it had a great impact on the Kabuki industry, including Danjuro. According to an article published in Kaishin Shimbun, Danjuro opined that Tanlan Kabuki had raised the prestige of Japanese theater as a whole, and in particular, bestowed honor upon his predecessor's name and increased actor status. Furthermore, an article from Asai Shimbun uh, states that uh, by virtue of Tanlan Kabuki, Japanese theater, which means kabuki here, had been turned into an elegant form of entertainment for high society, and people who are making efforts to reform kabuki should take advantage of this opportunity to accelerate their improvement. Especially among programs of Tenma Kabuki, Danjuro and the theater manager immediately performed Kanjincho at the Shintomiza Theater to celebrate this event and began to use this play for the full house. Kanjincho had been attracting pu public interest since its staging for the first time in 8040, uh, but created by Danjuro VII, uh, who, is the, who is the father of Danjuro IX. It was most popular play among Ichikawa family's standout performances, and it also corresponded to the high bro taste of the upper class because it was based on no performance. For this reason, it can be said that Kanjinchu had the proper background to become a play that satisfied both strata of the audience the general public who were hostile to the reformation of Kabuki and high-ranking officials who favored the refined art form. Therefore, Danjuro and theater attempt to deploy Kanjinchou more often for their entertainment business. And indeed, Danjuro frequently staged it thereafter and until he died. One interesting thing here is that Danjuro's purpose of the stage in Kanjinchu is in stark contrast to the previous years. In my next section, I'd like to figure out how Danjuro's attitude toward Kanjinchu changed after experiencing Tenman Kabuki. As you can see in this record, uh, Danjuro performed Kanjinchu for the first time in AD 59 in order to commemorate his father's death that year, because as I mentioned earlier, uh, Kanjinchu was created by his father. 
also around the time when Danjiro adopted his name, uh, Shume, in Japanese in 1874, he staged Kanjinsho several times to publicize the birth of a new successor. On the other hand, he was reluctant to stage Kanjinto while dedicating himself to Kabuki reforms with his Katsuriki monoplace right before Tenman Kabuki. Uh, it was only one time that Danjuro staged it for almost 10 years before that. Instead, he used to perform it in gatherings involving officialdom and foreign minister outside the theater. Given the fact that Don, uh, Kanjinchu was already decided upon as, the, as an opening play by officials in the case of Tennangabuki, it is most likely that Danjuro was being asked to stage Kanjinchu at this kind of gatherings as well. At this point, I think that Danjuro had two objectives in staging Kanjinchu. One was to solidify his position as a new Danjuro, and the other was to entertain the ruling class. In contrast, after Tanlan Gabuki in 1887, the reason why Danjuro stage Kanjincho changed, and he started to restructure Kanjincho as an exclusive and premium play relying on the emperor's prestige. For instance, Danjuro's monopolization of Kanjinchu became so strong that he filed a suit against the publication of a plagiarized script and stopped the performance based upon this script in 1892-93. According to several reference, the Nomura commentary play Kongoryo Ataka, which explicitly mimic Kanjinchu, was copyrighted and public, published in Nagoya in December 1891. Then the Tokiwaza Theater in Tokyo tried to stage a pseudo Kanjinchu play employing a Nomura script on January next year, but it was frustrated by Danjuro's dimension for suspension. This could happen because Oriko Shijitsuko, the elder daughter of Danjuro, had already owned the publication rights to Kanjinchu. However, another theater, the Takasagoza Theater in Tokyo, pushed ahead uh, with staging a plagiarized Kanjinchu, insisting that Nomura's script was also copyrighted material. Accordingly, the so called Kanjinchu dispute grows serious and Danjuro requests the cancellation of the copyright of Kongoryu Ataka in the Nagoya District Court. After addressing the problem of plagiarism by other organizations, Danjuro expelled uh, his, uh, one of his students, uh, Ichikawa Kumehachi, who was known for being the only female among his students because uh, she performed Kanjincho without permission when on a provincial tour in Niigata in 1894. Although there was previously a similar case involving Ichikawa Enosuke in 1874, it is clear that Danjuro's possessiveness regarding Kanjincho became stronger than ever around this time. And I think the change of Danjuro's attitude toward Kanjincho can be a manifestation of his conversion that began to engage in canonization process. While situating Kanjincho as a more privileged play after Tenman Kabuki, Danjuro also came to perform historical plays adapted from Chikamatsu Jorori, written by Fukuji Ochi, less being obsessed with his former style for reformation. Fukuchi Ochi was a journalist at Tokyo Nichi Nichi Shimbun in the early major period, and he became a playwright in residence for the Kabukisa Theater from 1889 after resigning from the newspaper. From 1890 to 93, Ochi concentrated upon the creation of plays based on Joruri, written by Chikamatsu Monzaimon who had been respected as a literary colossus by playwright since the middle of the Edo period. 
Ochi attempts to remake Chikamatsu's play on the basis of his own philosophy, even though they did not achieve great recognition from critics. However, in spite of Ochi's effort for adapting source work, it must not be overlooked that all of Ochi's kabuki plays were created for Danjuro and that he was able to maintain his position as a playwright under Danjuro's protection, despite opposition from pre-existing writer. In other words, several revisions of Chikamasa Jorudi could not have been accomplished unless Danjuro was supportive of Ochi. For this reason, I judge that Danjuro's investment in the use of Chikamasa Jorudi came from his sense of discouragement over the failure of Kabuki reforms. Danjuro thought that he would rather exploit the power of recognized canons in, instead of um, staging Katsuriki Mono to which uh, audiences were not convinced. Similarly, the preference of Matsubame Mono, uh, dance plays based on Nogaku, uh, from the beginning of the 8080s is also interpreted as one of the canonization phenomena. While the genre itself was initiated by Kanjincho based on uh, no play Ataka in 8040, Matsubame mono plays were not produced at all during the intervening period. However, in the 8080s, a Kabuki playwright, Kawataki Mokuami, began to write several Matsubame mono for Danjuro, such as uh, Tsurigitsune, Funabainke, Yamabushi Settai, and Momijigari. Furthermore, this trend became stronger in the 1890s. Ochi wrote Matsubame mono based upon no plays, including Koya Monogori, Nakakuni, Kagamijishi, and Nakamitsu. He also deployed Kyogen plays when creating uh, Suo Otoshiki, Nini Bakama, and Fukitorizuma. Among these uh, 11 Matsubame mono plays written for Danjuro, uh, eight plays uh, on the screen are, uh, were created after Tanman Babuki. So I infer that he was stimulated by the continuing success of Kanjincho, which was an opening play of the event. In conclusion, uh, although previous research has claimed that Danjuro quit his reformation in the face of Shinpa, Danjuro was aware that he needed to shift his stance to proceed a form of kabuki earlier than this. I contend that Tenna Kabuki was a turning point and his attempt to establish kabuki as a tradition began around this time. As part of the canonization process, Danjuro made full use of kanjincho authorized by the emperor and kabuki plays adapted from previous canon like uh, Chikamatsu Jorori and Nogaku. This process was the initial step toward kabuki achieving recognition as a, a traditional performing art and took the kabuki industry in a new direction to stick to uh, masterpieces of the past. After the death of Danjuro in 1903, this trend of canonization became stronger and the resurrection of the forgotten old plays and tribute performances continue with very few attempts at Kabuki reforms. Thereafter, Kabuki was crystallized as a traditional uh, theater form and recognized solely as a piece of Japanese heritage. Uh, this is the end of my presentation. Thank you for your listening.